Herzlich willkommen zurück zur Interwelten Baltic Sea Darts Open 2023. Die erste Runde präsentiert von der PDC Europe live hier aus der Wunderino Arena in Kiew. Zeit für unser drittes Match dieser Freitagabend-Session. Wir begrüßen auf der Bühne aus Münchhausen, Deutschland. Ein dreifacher Finalist auf der Challenge Tour. Ein Halbfinalist bei der Hülo PDC Europe Super League. Hier kommt Lu Lukas Bene. kommt aus Ipswich, England mit sechs Titeln auf der Development Tour. Ein European Tour Viertelfinalist. Wir begrüßen The Baba. Here we go then, game number three, and it sees Kirk Bevins come to the stage as our referee for the next couple, and it will be home nation qualifier Lucas Venig now up against another left-hander, but a somewhat slower, more methodical one than Graham Usher, who came through the previous match. As far as the barber is concerned, for 2023, he's looking to do exactly what he did in 2022, incremental improvement, and now... He's got to make that big push towards something like a world match play or a world Grand Prix. That will surely be his goal for the year. But as far as Lucas Venig is concerned, a non-tour card holder once again, and looking to make the most of events like this. To see if he can get his way into the European Championship, maybe, by the end of the season. I'm sitting alongside Dan Dawson for this one, and it'll be interesting to see how the guns of Lucas Venig go for someone nicknamed Lou. Yeah, Lucas Venig, not sure about Lou. More lewd based on that walk on. Practically X-rated as he was wished luck by his partner there. He made his way onto the stage. But Lucas Venig is a player I think has improved Lucas significantly over Game the last on. couple of years. But so is Ryan Meikle, and Ryan Meikle was starting from a higher base. He is the underdog in this game, Lucas Vayner, but we saw last year on the European Tour, he has the capability oh, to be extremely dangerous. The standout game was his victory over Chris Doby that got him through to the final day of a European Tour for the first and only time, taking out a 170 and a 167 in that match, ended with a 101 average. Doby beaten despite a 100 average of his own. Now that sort of stuff from Lucas Vayner is going to make life very, very difficult. Probably too difficult for Ryan. 140. He started the year pretty well. Mid-90s averages is his level that he's set for himself. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? He's got to be doing the things that he did right last year oh, and then find a little bit more as well. In key matches like this and in the European Tour events that he qualifies for, 
he's going to have to dig deep. He's going to have to uh, come through difficult challenges like this, make a lot more Sundays, and with the swollen prize money, make the most of it. Because he does have a good chance, in my opinion, of making the match play if he has a consistent four or five months. In. Yeah, well, he's in that last spot for the world match play as things stand. But there are so many events and so many European tour events prior to the match play with that extra prize money. It is so up in the air. Now, it's in his hands. Oh, so. You know, anybody here this weekend, they go and win one of these things, then you think, may as well book your place in Blackpool now, even if you're starting from scratch this year. But... It's a very difficult thing to do when a Euro Tour. 55. Peter Wright won last, this is won one last year. That was his first for five years. And that's Peter Wright we're talking about. Feining's going to get darts at a double here. Meikle's not even on a finish. Yeah, for the first very, yeah. very, very nicely yeah. done. To Ryan through first. Him. Somewhat familiar sound there for Lucas playing on home turf. He's used to that now. Came through six games in qualifying, Dan. Six. A lot of people at that home nation qualifier. But he wasn't really tested until he got to the final game where he beat Nico Kurtz by five oh. legs to four. He did have a hundred average in qualifying against Liam Mendel Lawrence. But did stroll through those first five games and then managed to survive that final encounter which gets him into this battle here Six. in Kiel. Well, real spread of performances in that qualifying campaign, wasn't it? You mentioned the high average, but there's something like 25 points between his highest and his lowest. It's a, a big old difference. If it's somewhere near his top end, he can be competitive with anybody. If it's somewhere near his bottom end, he'll be lucky to win more than the one leg he's got. You do get the feeling that when he's pushed, he seems to get better. And averages can sometimes lie to you because they can be swollen by the fact that your opponent is better. But I like that you mentioned that game against Chris Dorby last year because that win looked better now than it probably did back then. Premier League player, Premier League nightly winner, Chris Dorby. I watched a lot of Lucas at the BBC Europe Super League back in November. And I was so impressed with that tournament because it showed the strength and the depth of German darts right now because... Look at what Nicole Springer did this afternoon. He was brilliant. And it's not that much of a surprise, is it? No. That's the thing. Nico Springer's getting better. Lucas Vanek is getting better. If Nico Kurtz can start getting better, oh, if Fabian no. Schmutzler, the teenager, can start building on his immense promise. Ricardo Pietrechko yeah, as well. Another one getting better. You know, these all of these players who aren't at the very top two, we've still got Schindler and Clemens as the top two in Germany. But if the rest of them start improving and start reaching that level, not, and there's a very real chance that Clemens 78. and Schindler may get better than they are, then Germany does start to become the superpower in darts that it could be. Double six for Vainig for a 2-0 lead. Well, Ryan Meikle is barely even in this game at the minute, but he Ryan could level up. I just don't want to be called Ryan tonight. Ryan Joyce had a nightmare, and so far, Ryan Meikle, it's almost as if his darts were left in the practice room. He needs something like a 1 2 6 just to get him going. But he's not going to get there. And Vainig, who narrowly missed double 12 and double 6, now gets Lucas another look to double his lead. Down to the basement double. And he'll have to bypass that one. Six. Not able to do so gives Miko a second bite of the cherry. He may only get one dart from here. Bain on the 16. He does love double top. But he's barely hitting anything he's going for because in the he first couple of legs. Six. He's a good 20 points behind his seasonal average in this game. And he's now 2-0 down as well. Almost embarrassed to win that leg, Lucas Feenig. He flicks his eyebrows over to his corner of the VIP area because he didn't expect to be 2-0 up with that Leg of 19 darts. 19 dart, oh, great of throw, no less. I love that we were talking about the potential threats in German darts, and at no point did we mention Max Hopp. 
because now Max does not have a tour card, he's actually 70. eligible to play in home nation qualifiers now, which doesn't seem real. But he is eligible. And I just wonder if Max needs a year of rebuilding before he starts again. Still the only German player to win PDC ranking events. Max Hopp won a Euro Tour, won a Players' Championship event. It's not for the lack of trying for Gabriel Clemens. He's been in a lot of finals. He has. Uh, Gabriel only very recently joined Max by becoming the second German to reach a major semi-final. Of course, Gabriel doing it at the World Championship. Max actually missed darts to reach the final of the European Championship a few years ago. Ornham. That was the most 90s outfit I've seen today. You know, see what McCarthy's wearing? No comment. Sorry, he hasn't got a microphone, so he can't. Oh, no, he can come yeah, back, turns not. out. It's a series of hand gestures. Did, did you know that Gabriel Clemens, who you will see, actually, against Daryl Gurney in Game 7 tonight, is the second German player to have ever banked a six-figure check? 140. I'll tell you the first. Andre Velga. Ding, 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 ding. ding, ding. ding. 100,000 pounds for that. Well, I can't remember what it was called, though. Was it called the German championship it was a monstrous start to no, I do I believe so. that it was Velga who won that and it was the biggest prize that anyone's ever banked in Germany but it's yeah. one of the biggest prizes in darts at Correct. the time well everything's going Lucas's way and if it keeps going this way he's going to get that chant you remember when Luke Donald was the world number one in golf and everybody started going Luke no I don't don't do golf Soz let you down there again Oh, right, he's already looking absolutely dejected here, Ryan Meikle. This won't improve his mood if Lucas Vanek finds Sops. Exactly what he does, and this is a stroll at the minute for Lucas Vanek. Right now, I'm supposed to be an expert on this sport, Dan. I'm a monstrous fan of Ryan Meikle. I think he's got one of the best attitudes in world darts but everything has been tested right here. As to what's going wrong, I don't know. Easy. Something yeah. is obviously not clicking tonight because his first nine is 80. Yeah, I really don't know yeah, what's happening. I think he, that bloke knows the score. He, he's got his evening sorted, but Ryan Meikle definitely hasn't. His evening might be drastically shorter than planned at this rate. Yeah, think about how he played in qualifying, which admittedly was a little bit of time ago, back on the 13th of February, to a couple of weeks ago. But he did register 100 average in beating yeah, Matt Campbell won. in his final game. And Matt's played some decent darts over the last couple of weeks. Last time, last Sunday, he'd averaged 103 beating Dolan. He averaged 98 when he'd lost to Chizzy in his board final. And he's been around that sort of mid-90s average more often than he's not in the games he's played on the Pro Tour. But you're right, everything has been going one way for Ryan Meikle. It's an upward oh, trend, not drastically upward trend. He's just been getting better and better, small steps. And that's good. And of course, one bad game doesn't derail all that. But it is strange to see him struggling as he is doing here. What he is finding is that small 20 a lot. And he's quite stubborn when it comes to that treble 20 because he can bypass it like that. But when you are constantly short on that treble 20 with dart one, you might be advised to do some switching because when you go south oh, to the 19s, if you're going short on the 20s, it's just a little bit easier to throw down at something for a little while. It might just reinvigorate you. That's a better first dart glance over to the score 98 he's himself 86 and Lucas Vanek oh another in there leaves tops oh it looked inviting as well but Ryan Meikle who's only had one dart at double so far in this match at tops may only get one at the ball here and this is not his kind of finish no because he likes tops and tens he might just need the ball it is barbecue sauce. 47. Not saucy enough. Because you require 54. 
and to compound the pain, this is for a break of throw. Yeah, and that's right yeah, in the middle. Lucas, Lucas An almost sympathetic Game. head tilt there from Lucas Venig, who probably can't understand what's happening. Well, I mean, he's, he's averaging 17 darts a leg. Let's just put it up there. Because oh, 17 cool, darts a leg is fine, but at this level, you can easily be beaten to nil throwing that kind of level. You can. And Lucas Weinig has won games oh, on the European Tour. I mean, not many, admittedly. He'd had that brilliant win against Dobie, and that was in the second round, having beaten Steve Lennon. They were both 6-4, and he had another 6-4 oh. win three years ago for the German Darts Championship. They're the only victories he's had. He has lost the other eight matches he's played. He has never routed someone on the European Tour. And at the minute, that looks like there's a very real chance because Ryan Meikle, not only is he not playing well, he's not had any luck there either. That tends to happen when you're having a game like this. Now, we talked a little bit earlier, Dan, about this new oh, punch rule that's coming in. What do you make of Vainig's points? I think they'd be banned in about a year. Well, I think it's any kind of grip in the first 15 millimetres. So the bit that goes into the board, oh. that's going to have to go. You'd still be allowed some grip after that. And there will be an implement for the referees and the tournament director to measure that. So be prepared, players. Oh, if you've got grip anywhere near the last centimetre and a half of the point, be prepared to use something a little different and a bit smoother like Ryan's here. And he's someone who doesn't change anything about his setup, never has, in all the time he's yeah, been a tour card holder. Because you require five. He's moping about on stage because he can get nothing going. And yeah, you feel for Ryan Meikle because this is win. an absolute battering. Right it's a 13 darter from Lucas Vaney. And Vaney. he might produce a whitewash here. And as poor as Ryan has been, this is solid from Lucas Vaney. He's averaging 93, 42% on the doubles. There's been nothing flashy, nothing spectacular, but it's been pretty good. And if he can get one more leg here, we are guaranteed oh. a German, at least one, in the final day of the tournament. Because it will be an all-German encounter between Lucas Weinig and Martin Schindler in round two <laughs> tomorrow. And I'd be fascinated to see who the crowd are cheering oh, for. Want. Well, I know, that, know who they're going to be cheering for tomorrow when Michael Smith plays Nico Springer. That's going to be fun. A lot of fun when this place is going to be rammed with Darts fans. That's better, Ryan. That's only his second 140 of this entire game. To be fair, Lucas has only had three, but it's been enough. It's the residual oh, scoring that's been better for Lucas. The 96s, those kind of shots. You see a performance like this from someone who's so solid. You wonder if they're maybe not feeling well, maybe something's happened. I don't see any perspiration on the brow, so he looks fine. Maybe we can put it down to it being just one of those days, but maybe this is one of those legs that he will win. We'll go bolt, try and set up the two data. 356 see what he feels about that shot you know, even when he's in control of a leg he's not happy because of everything that's gone before he's gonna have loads of time to get oh. rid of this 105 and avoid the white well, box, 105. But... can you believe that Ryan Meikle can turn this game around from here we have seen it if Ryan Meikle does lose this match 89. 6 nil or 6-1 I get the feeling, based on what we've seen from this game and the last game, Ryan Searle's going to turn up tomorrow and change his name. 7 Z7. Ryan, you require 16. Come on, Ryan, get yourself a leg. Two fours. He likes it up here. Maybe he doesn't. But he does have a leg on the board. He's not going to be bagel today. And funnier things have happened, Dan. We've seen people win from 5 0 down. We have. But it's rare that they've come from 5 0 down when they're playing oh. in this manner.
maybe it was all that chat of the world match play and kicking things up a notch. Maybe he just wants to focus on the now, which is exactly the attitude that you have to have. Right, uh, Lucas Vain as well. Look, if things are coming almost too easily, then you have to make sure you carry on doing what you've been doing. Oh, do you you can't want... just sort of go, oh, well, I'm, I was 5-0 and I'm going to be good enough at some point to get another leg between now and the end. You've got to keep attacking. You've got to have that ruthless streak. If you're doing something all the way through a game oh, and it's three. working, keep on doing it. Don't change anything. That's the key to this game, isn't it? Because if you are doing something right and you're winning, just keep on keeping on. But the direct opposite to that is how do you fix what's gone wrong if you're Ryan Miko? Fixing on the fly is one of the hardest things to do in this game. It's almost like you start overthinking. Start trying to pit all that stuff you do automatically. When you're playing well and you just step up to the hockey and it just you're not even having to think. But now you are. Am I holding it right? Am I throwing it right? Am I doing this right? And you start micromanaging every little thing that normally you do automatically. And that's when those things sort of break down. You become aware of things that you never were before. It's a difficult thing to get out of. But Lucas Vaining might be getting out of this match with a 6-1 win. And he might do it with a 160 finish. Oh, oh Lucas Vaini! He was reminiscent of last year in his Dobie victory. A massive finish to round it off. But this one, under not a great deal of pressure, a turn up for the books as the muscle bound German sets up an all German clash in round two with Martin Schindler. Brian Meikle didn't turn up. Lucas Vaini took advantage.